Well, just like you can print to paper, you can also print to PDF, and what you see is what you print. It's a way of capturing those settings for either archiving them or perhaps sending it out to your, your print provider for some commercial or high-end quality print jobs. Now, when you print, it does depend on the authoring application and some of the print options, but as soon as you install Acrobat on your system, you actually get it as a print driver that you can take advantage of. What happens when you print to PDF is in the background, the file is getting converted to PostScript, which then is being converted to PDF with the Acrobat distiller, which works all in the background. You don't even have to open anything up. Back in the day, so the very earliest option we had to do all this manually. But it's really nice to know that Acrobat's doing all this process for us behind the scenes using different conversion methods and different print preferences and properties to create that, that process. What we're going to do is explore the, the print dialog box and what we can do to, to enhance that process. So here we go. Well, I can actually start in Acrobat and I can have a file opened. I'll go ahead and open up a file here. And I can have this file open and actually recreate a file using the print. So I'm going to go to File and choose print and I'm noticing here that I've got this drop down that says Adobe PDF and that's my default printer although I have a few other print drivers or options available to me and I could print a PDF and I could take advantage of certain settings in here and these settings that I'm looking at are pretty typical for the actual um, for any of the drivers so if even if I switch let's say to office you can see how these settings don't necessarily change. However, I have a button here called Properties, and these were going to be device dependent. So if I'm printing to an OfficeJet versus Adobe PDF, I get some different properties for when I print it. And I can click on Properties, and I actually have some different standards. And these different standards or conversion settings are built right into PDF. So you should expect to see these and there could be a slight variation if you're using the Creative Suite, Adobe Creative Suite versus, let's say, Microsoft Office. But for the most part, you're going to see these different symbols. Now, when I high quality, there's actually a quick description of what this is for. This is actually a really good way of printing information when you want it to be a high quality print. It may not necessarily be commercial print, but it's going to be a very good quality and retain some high resolution for images. Now, if I went to press quality, this would be even a higher setting for, for images, and it would be a press quality. But if you're going to do press quality, you should be definitely talking with your vendor, and this is where you want to ask them, should I use press quality or perhaps some of these other standards? Now, these other standards allow print shop or print vendors to um, maintain certain standards so they'll know that the, the file when you print it is going to comply with their settings that they want to use. And these have all been standards that have been accepted by different industries that they will they promise to maintain. So you can use it for archiving purposes as well as for printing purposes. And let's say your print shop says we're going to use the PDFA. This is the most common denominator common denominator standard, kind of the, the lowest quality, but you could use those standards and it's going to comply to different settings and um, a, then your print shop could print it and in 15 years from now you could still be able to open up the file. That's some of the advantages of these, the PDF standards over here. Now you also have some options for working with a smallest file size versus standard and when we started this whole process the default setting was standard, and this actually is a really good one to use in general because it creates files that are okay to print within the office environment. So you're going to be printing them in-house with your desktop printer, your your um, laser jet that's that's um, the office printer, um, and they're they're fairly small as well. But if you really wanted to be even small, you could do smallest file size. These aren't as good a quality if you're going to be printing them, but they're great for putting on the website or emailing to other people or proofs. So they actually will make it even smaller. But again, this drop down list is all pulling from some default standards. I'm going to change cancel. And again, when I'm working with printer, I'm accessing that through my Adobe PDF, the properties, and I can just see these different settings. You can even create your own settings. So you could edit this existing one and even save it as your own setting that then you could use over and over again. So for example, a lot of times when I'm working with files, I am doing some different works with images or some different works with standards. And so I can 
create those options, do a save as, and it actually gets stored with Acrobat. I'm going to meant to click on cancel. There we go. Click on cancel. It's actually stored with Acrobat, and so become a drop down that you'll be able to pull from, not just through the Acrobat environment, but through other tools that are accessing these settings. Because again, it's stored back on the distiller. And then, of course, depending on the print setup, I might be doing making some other changes, and then these other changes are going to get captured. So, for example, if I want to print just the odd pages. And let's say I want to print color as black. That's pretty dark, isn't it? And it, when I'm going to use the properties, and it's still set as standard as the default, but when I click on OK, those settings are going to get captured. And I'll just go ahead and put a number two there so that we know it's the, another version of it. And those settings that I set up have been captured. Now, I was creating this from Acrobat, but for even more control, I could go to the authoring program. So, for example, here is a Word document, and I can go to File and Print, and I'm going to have a slightly different setup because I'm in Word, but again, I have different tools for working with print. I have my Adobe PDF, and there might be some other drivers that are available to you, and I've got my print properties, and you can see there we go. Again, there's that standard, and it's that same option. And again, if any of those files might have been, or those conversion settings have been added, I'm pulling from that same list because it's actually stored in Acrobat, not here in Word. And again, I can make some different settings. And depending on the product, so here's Word, here's another one, here's Publisher, you might have some different options. And then, of course, here's Illustrator. I want to show you a file that was part of the Creative Suite or the Adobe product. And when I go to File, Print, again, I get some different options in here. And this is, Adobe products tend to be intended for commercial prints. They have more options in there, but I could do something like marks and bleeds because this file is actually bleeding off the edge. It's going to go all the way to the edge, and so I could print those trim marks. And because I'm doing a print, I'm actually seeing not just the um, file, but I'm seeing the slug area. That's information that's getting, letting me know um, where the bleeds are being set up and some crop marks as well. And again, it's still printing to PDF. So I can go ahead and print that out. And we'll just go ahead and save that in Acrobat X. Put a 2 there so I know which one I've saved it to. And you can see it's showing up some of the information plus the area where it's going to get um, trimmed for future purposes. And Acrobat's a little different when it comes to print. We can also, instead of printing Acrobat, we can save the file. But that really becomes an export option. As, as opposed to a print setting. One other tip and trick about print, when you're working with print files, I'm going to go here to devices and printers. These are um, in Windows, when you go to your devices and printers feature, you're actually able to see what de print devices are, are installed on your system. And one of them is going to be your default printer. And one of the tricks that I like to do is I like to make my PDF, my Adobe PDF, my default printer. You can see here it's set as default printer. And that ends up saving me a lot of paper because if I ever accidentally click on the print button, instead of printing directly to paper, it might do that here, um, it actually will print, it'll actually prompt me, do you want to print to PDF? And, um, and it's very easy to just choose a paper printer when I want to and then use this as my default printer. So I like that feature quite a bit. So what you've seen are some different options when you're going to create a PDF. You can actually set up a document as if you were going to print it, but instead of printing it to paper, print it to PDF, capture all those settings, and then save that as a file for archiving purposes or perhaps to send down to, some, to another service agency that's going to print it for high-end commercial output.